I think my first song I wrote in fifth grade for a talent show, I wrote a song about Jimmy Carter. And I had this band and I played guitar, but um, we didn't win the talent show.
start chopping. Um, I'm not sure how the song came about, but um, you know, the beginning of the song, the guitar intro I played on the telly, and uh, yeah, it's not kind of a typical style or sound that I usually had before. It's a little bit funkier than uh, my usual guitar thing. I don't know. I don't know what start chopping is about. <laughs> We uh, called it that because we had a lot of tape edits, I remember, on it. It was like a... I think we used some different versions and chopped them together. And, you know, it was kind of exciting back when there it was taped to see someone, you know, with a razor blade cutting this two-inch tape and you're, you're just like, I hope you didn't just ruin the whole song. You don't know what's going to happen, but it's exciting on the other, on the other hand. I always remember music being around. I always liked music, so I just, uh, I remember really getting into it, I guess, you know, when I'm nine or ten or something, and with my brother and sister's records, and my sister had a guitar. I tried to play it for a little bit. I took a couple lessons, but it didn't, I just couldn't really jive with it. Then I started playing drums and that seemed like a better match at the time. But then, you know, I just really was into music and wanted to keep playing music, and I thought I should switch to guitar because I didn't like any guitar players around here, and I had so many drum lessons, I figured I could teach someone how to play drums, and I already knew Lou was good on guitar, so he could just kind of play the same thing on bass. And so we'd all just kind of learned how to play together. And um, uh, I was looking for a guitarist with an original sound, a noisy sound, uh, just kind of a aggressive sound. And I wanted also a percussive kind of style, just not the types of guitar players that lived around here. Yeah, there was one kid in um, high school who was like the high school punk rocker. He ended up being the singer of Deep Moon, my band. And he kind of uh, taught me all about punk rock. I just got really into it. And then, you know, hardcore. I even related to more because it was like the same kind of kids were making it, like American kids who didn't necessarily have terrible childhoods, but they were still pissed off about something or other. And that's kind of where I was at. I was like, I didn't really have anything exactly to be mad about, but I was still mad. Yeah, my writing style is I write for myself and figure if I like it, someone else will like it. I don't really know how to think about writing a hit song or writing songs just that people would like. I don't know, it doesn't really, I can't figure that out or it doesn't occur to me or something. Yeah, I want the song to be catchy. I want it, you know, I want to like the song. And I think you need the melody, you know, is the main thing of the song, even if it's drenched in noise around it. Um, you always want, you know, some memorable melody in there. Feel the pain of everyone.
that's one of the few songs I think I've written on tour, like, you know, on a tour van or something. And, um, yeah, I just played the riff around and I came up with the lyric, you know, I feel the pain of everyone. And then my friend who was on tour with us, then he said, and then I feel nothing. So he gave me that line, which I thought was awesome. And then somehow then it turned into a song later. Uh, this guitar is a copy of um, first Telecaster I got and that I use all the time recording and this guy at the studio where I recorded Fort Apache in Boston owned the guitar and they had a lot of guitars and stuff at the studio and just asked the guy if he ever wanted to sell it to call me and he said I could never sell that guitar but then a few months later he called and he wanted to sell it so I was psyched you know I didn't have any guitar that sounded like that and yeah, I ended up using it a lot. I played almost every lead on record since I've gotten it on the, the telly. So like, beginning with Where You Been, I liked what I played on it. It sounded more interesting to me than stuff I would play on other guitars. That, you know, it led me in directions I thought were more interesting. And just less generic or something, I don't know why. Um, the guy had told me he had put a 56 pickup in the uh, bridge. Somehow he liked that better, and I like that, that pickup too. And it's a top loader, so it doesn't, you know, the strings don't go through the body and, you know, be easier to bend because the strings aren't going as far. And, and people say maybe it doesn't have as much sustain, but I don't really notice that because uh, with a big muff, everything has sustain, you know. So I didn't do too much to it. It had jumbo frets when I got it and I just kind of played it and painted it. It was kind of a yellow reef in when I got it and I put the mirror pick guard on it also. And this color is called Bottle Rocket Blue Flake. It's a sparkly blue cu color, uh, reminiscent of, you know, drums, sparkly drums from the 60s and 70s. and. Um, I've always liked that color and I was psyched to um, have it be a guitar. Yeah, I didn't know much about guitars, you know, I just had the Jazzmaster first and I didn't think much about tellies until I played this one and really liked it, yeah, so that was the first one I really bonded with and uh, still the main one I play. Yeah, the only thing with a telly doesn't have a whammy bar sometimes I'll think to reach for there's nothing there and the, so on the telly I've got to play a little more precise or something I can't just yank on the whammy bar to cover up mistakes or maybe that's why I like the leads I play I'm thinking about it more because of, there's no whammy bar it's a good change for me to get my mind to go in a different direction um yeah when I see a guitar a lot of times I'll you know, try to justify it to myself by saying maybe this has a few songs in it already, so if I buy it, it and a few songs come out, then it was worth buying it. I think that's a good justification for me to keep buying old guitars. And it'd be exciting just to see it pop up in different places. It's interesting to see who will play it, and a lot of people will just like the guitar and play it, and they won't even know who I am, and I like that aspect of it too. Yeah, I think I write songs the same way as I have always done. I think on the first record, songs had a lot more parts because we weren't that confident and figured uh, the more parts the song has, the better it is, just because I don't, you know, rather than having to stand on one good part, just have like 20 parts. And I think over the years, I've, yeah, put less parts in because I feel a little bit more confident about the song. Never sure who's out to take Never sure when I'm awake If there's a difference, make it three If I could change, I would agree There's a section out of reach Little things I'd like to keep Rattles in your head aside I'd expect another time
from the new album and yeah that feels like a telly song also it's got a little bit of a country thing to it and lyrically I'm not sure about I ran away I'd have to like read the lyrics and think about it a lot of times I don't know what anything means until later on when I sit with it for a while yeah I think with um, the guys in Dinosaur Jr. we just uh yeah, we kind of grew up playing together, so we have this sound together that, you know, we finally realized at some point is kind of a rare thing to, you know, have this unique sound that we make together. So we kind of, uh, you know, we kind of cherish that, I guess, and try to stay together and keep that energy going and keep the sound alive. Yeah, I don't foresee retiring anytime soon, but who knows. <laughs> <laughs> 